really don't even feel like preaching. His goodness is running. It's running. I, I, I don't know if you feel it. I, I don't know somebody. It, 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 I, I don't know if you feel it. I, I, I don't know if you feel it. I don't know if you feel it, but it, it, the goodness, it, the, the, the goodness, the, the goodness, all, all my life. Oh, not some of it. preaching in heaven let me say that again there's not going to be no preaching in heaven no 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 because the king of king and the god of good the lord lord of lord is going to be there all we're going to have to do is be in his presence and, and praise him there won't need be no need for no preaching oh glory be to god it this morning but it's something about a double dose it's something to do about the Holy Ghost when when he hits you when he he he, he opens up some memories that you don't forgot about how God has covered you when others thought you would gave up on you you weren't worthy it looked like you weren't gonna be to make it out Hallelujah. And then, not at the last minute, but right on time. Right, right. See, see, God, God operates outside of time. He's, he's, he, he, time, time, he's limited by. And he looks down and he sees you. He said, yeah, right here at this, t your time. Because it's already done in his time. He steps in. Oh, yes, he does. He steps in. And you don't even know it that he done stepped in. But you thought you done worked it out or somebody else done worked it out for you. But that wasn't it because God's goodness was running. Uh, when you were born, he, he knew that. Oh, I, I ain't come to preach about that. Oh! I don't, I'm going to try to preach this sermon. I'm going to try. I, I'm going to give a condensed version because something didn't happen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of... Let me, let me, let me... Ah, thank the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We do thank you, dear God, for all that you are. I feel your presence, Lord. I feel your presence. Feel it. my spirit. Take me out of myself this morning. Use me to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 I, 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 I want you to know that if you ain't shouting now, you ain't going to have no time to kind of get ready when glory time comes. I just want you to know that right there because I'm going to drown you out. I'm going to drown you out because uh, I'm going to have a whole lot to shout about just to make it. <laughs> uh, hey, 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 I just want to make it in. I, 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 I just want to make it in. I ain't got to go flying in. 
I ain't got to be the first in the numbers. I just want to get in. I just want to get it, It's rough. Uh -oh. Anyway, the theme this week uh, is trans, being transformed by the renewing your mind. And I want to take that theme and just talk a little bit from a, diff a little bit different take on it. You are called to be a transformer and not a conformer. I appreciate this morning. This is the first time I've ever had to preach two sermons back to back the same sermon. Normally, I would do a revival five days a week. You preach one day, and then the next day you come with another. And so, um, for those of you who heard this, I, I'm going to stick to the script. I'm not all, no, I can't stick to the script because the Lord didn't change the script. He just shifted. <laughs> he just shifted. He, this is a whole different service, y'all. I don't know about y'all. This, this is a whole different service right here. Now, this is a whole, there were more people, but this is a different service right here. I, I mean, he, the, the Lord had done something different here. Something that happened between this morning, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. The Holy Ghost finally said, yeah, they, they real about what they're talking about down there. I think I'll step out of glory for a minute down there at Destiny and come down there and sit with them for a little bit and just breathe on them. Just, just, just breathe on them. Just give, give them a taste of what it, what it is that they're, that's running after them. I'm, I'm going to give them a little taste. Not all of it, because you can't handle all of that. So I'm just going to blow on you a little bit. Oh, it's, it's different. Mm, it's, it's different. It, 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 there's a different atmosphere. And I said the first service, was like, it was great. Hey, hey, I preached my heart out. I ain't got nothing left. But it's a difference. It, 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 it. I'm old school. I'm old school preacher. I'm just, just some old school preacher. I was telling the saints this morning that I got an invitation to come back to my university where I graduated from to preach on homecoming. And <laughs> whew, they don't know what they're getting into. It's a Methodist college. Everybody's quiet. Well, I'm going to light it up, though. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to light it up. No, I'm gonna, oh, I was loud then too, so don't worry about it, y'all. I've always been loud, but I am louder than ever because I got something to shout about. Amen. Turn with me to uh, uh, Romans, the 12th chapter. We'll be coming from Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2. Welcome to Destiny Online. I got 26 minutes. The clock is ticking. Look at it. 26 minutes. Let me say 26. Yeah, it's ticking on me. All right. I got a 26 minute. Amen. Let me see if I can do that. That don't mean nothing. Amen. And, 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 and so God, God has been good. God, God has been good to me. And, and, and we, we're going to talk about transform. I'll take these two words, transforming and being conformed. They're kind of opposite of one another. They, they, they're like on different, different extremes. And one is easy to do, and the other takes something else to do. And I've always been, I've always been one that, that didn't go by the rules. <laughs> I've just been a radical. I've just been, I always just didn't believe that my destiny was tied to anything like anybody else. I always just believed that God has something different for me. I didn't even know God, but I just knew my life was different. There was a purpose in my life. And so I'm going to share with you this morning from 12, Romans 12, 1 through 2. As I shared this morning with the morning crowd, people this morning, we're living in different times. I know I see some of these young ladies here, they probably was about, y'all about 10 years old. I'm just mixing with y'all. 20, and they're in their 20s, and they're, you know, 20. But I'm sure they don't remember some of the stuff we, you know, we used to have pages. Y'all remember pages, don't y'all? Boy, you thought you was something, you had a pager. Somebody paid you? Good Lord, our mercy. I got a page. Yeah, but you got to run 10 miles down there and make a phone call to call them back. Amen. Yeah. And then, and then they got the flip, then we got the flip phone. And we thought we were something there. Oh, I got a flip phone. Look, a plop. Yeah, but what can you do with it? You can make a phone call. Amen. And then we got the internet. Oh, Lord. And, and I know y'all remember. Y'all may not, you know, color TVs. They had a little round TV. Well, let me go back a little bit. How about the black and white TVs? 
Amen, amen, the black and white TV. It was so bad, we were so poor. See, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you the truth. See, I ain't gonna tell y'all no lie. We were so poor, we had to put the little color thing on top of the black and white. They had the red, the green, and y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we had to make our own color. We sit there looking at the top of the man's head was red, in the middle was blue, and down below was green or something. They don't, they don't know what we're talking about. We live in a different world today. Everybody got flat screen TVs in every room in the house. Hey man, they got internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got they on their phone. They they can do everything on their phone. They can shop on their phone. But the heart of man is so more wicked today than it's ever been. This stuff is conforming us to itself, and it's also transform. Oh Lord, have mercy. It's also transforming us away from the things that God would have us to be. So let's look what the Bible has to say. The Apostle Paul, he, he, he's writing this from, for, to, to the saints that are in Rome. And you got to understand something. You see, Rome was the seat of power. I, I don't think we, we tend to understand because we, we feel we, so, we have so much freedom and so much liberty in America today. We kind of feel we have so many rights that we can go and do whatever we want to do. But Rome was the seat of power, of authority in the world. It ruled every place. It was everyone was under the rule of the governance of Rome. We live today, America is the seat of world power. We need to understand that we're, we're living in almost identical times as, the, as Paul was writing in the book of Romans. And the one thing he said to them, he, as he wrote to them, he, he, he used a word, and he used it three times. He said, to the called. What was he talking about? He's talking about those that live in this empire that God has personally reached out and called and he uses a word let me break it down to you it, 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 it means a divine invitation to embrace salvation that's what he said he said to the call he just didn't say they picked up their cell phone God and dialed your number and you answered and said hello oh no 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 he said that the Spirit of God found you someplace in your sin, where you was at, where you was hurting, and called you by your name and divinely picked you up and straightened you out and set you on a new determination and destination in your life. Called, he said. And you think he would be done with that, but no, he uses it again. And he used it again. And the reason he used it three times, because he wanted to put emphasis on it. And I want you to know this morning, those who are saved, you are called. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why did your friends get saved? Because they didn't get the call. Why didn't your neighbor get saved? They didn't get the call. Why didn't some of your family members get saved? They didn't get the call. But you, you got the call. Oh, you got, I, I, I can remember when God called me and God saved me. I was in a, I was in a, 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 a youth convention, about three or 4,000 young people there, 18, 19, 20 years old. And the preacher, I don't even know what he was preaching to this day. That's 40 some years ago. But when he gave the invitation, I stood up and ran, I, I, you talking about being shy? There was no shyness. I heard the call, and the Lord said to me, John, I am real. That's what he said, I heard it. He said, I am real. Because I'd ask the question, if you are real, show me. And he called me. And I, I don't know about all the other 3,000 that were there. It didn't matter to me. But I heard my name, John. Oh, yeah. And I ran up to that altar. And my life ain't been the same since. And so the called is important. Called. And he said called to be saints. We don't use that word anymore, do we? You don't hear that word, do you? 
Uh, you know, y'all don't hear that. The old, the old folk like me, when you in your 40s like I am. Okay. 24 years ago in my 40s, we used to use that word, saints. It meant something. It means holy. It means set apart. See, you are different. We, we are different. We are like the world. We have come out of the world. So he said, call. I got 19 more minutes now. I'm getting there. Trust, trust me, y'all. All right, so there's four things I want to talk about this morning. Number one, you are living sacrifice. Number two, it is to God. Number three, you are called to conform. You, you aren't called to conform. And number four, and number four, you are called to be a transformer. Let's look at Romans 12, 1 through 2, 1 and 2, 12, 1 first. The first thing, you are living sacrifice. And I'm preaching from the King James Bible. I just love the King James Bible. I have other translations at home that I study with, but when I'm preaching, I love the King James because of the poeticness of it, and I just like to dissect it and, and, and really get down and take my time with it. I'm not one of those preachers. I could take a verse and we could be here all day. I, I, I can, but I would like to, I like to dissect it and let God speak because every word is important. See, every word is every word in the book is important. Don't, don't think that the book is just a book. It is not just a book. And I don't care how many times you read it, you aren't going to understand all of it because there's so much here that God only reveals when he wants you to know what he, you need to know when he reveals it. So the first thing is, he says, beseech. That word means to beg. It, it, it means to act on someone uh, 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 to do something. I, you know, your mama and your daddy, if those of you had parents at home, they would, they would tell you to do something, you wouldn't do it. And they'll beat you. <laughs> yeah, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah, see, can I say something? Can, can, let, 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 give me a little liberty. Can, just give me a little, give me a little liberty. When we were coming up, you go to school and you did something wrong, they spank you till it hurt. And then you come home and you got a second dose till it hurt. So when you go back the next day, you don't know how to sit down because it hurt. <laughs> but you know how to behave. Folk don't know how to behave today. They, they, they don't. And so he, he said, I, I, I'm begging you. He said, I, 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 I'm, I'm begging you. Why? He said, truly. He said, therefore. And then he uses the word brethren. That means fellow believers. I'm, I, I'm talking to you who are believers in Jesus Christ. And I want to get a message over to you. See, there's an urgency here. He's not just talking words just to be talking words. That, that, that you, when you read it, there's a sense of life and death. There's a sense of, of uh, I, I, I got to give you this information because if you don't get it, you aren't going to make it. There's a, there's a sense of an urgency. And so he says, I beseech you, therefore truly, brethren, fellow believers. And then he said, Why, how do I beseech you? See, it's not that I'm, I'm telling you from me. See, I'm not just preaching. I'm telling you from God this morning. So it's not John Boswell. I am sharing with you from the depths of my soul as God leads me. And Paul said, I'm writing you by the mercies. So we don't, you know, do we really understand today? We don't hear that word that much, mercy. When we hear that, we may think it's weak. Somebody, give, you have mercy on that person. Well, why you have mercy on that person? No, 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 no. He's not talking about that. He, that's, a, that's a natural form of it. He's talking about something deeper than just a natural form of, of, of doing something nice to someone. The word mercy here means the bowels uh, 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 of your uh, uh, compassion that resides in the inside of you. He, he, he's talking about the heart of your emotion that, 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 that really moves you. He, 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 he says it is the, 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 the longing and the manifestation. So he's saying that the bowels of God's compassion for you. 
You, do, do you understand how much God really loves you? He said, I'm coming to you from the mercy of God, that God knows that you're sick and God knows that you're in sin. And I'm coming to you trying to tell you that God really loves you. That's what he's saying. He, he, he doesn't spell it out like that. But that's what the word mercy really means. From the passion and, and the emotion and the love of God. When he's writing this, and then he goes on to say, why? Why should you, why should you do this? He said, I want you to be a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. God doesn't want nothing dead. And God don't want anything. And I know we're singing, the, 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 the worship team is praising, and some of y'all, you may not understand it. But see, the Bible talks about when you get to heaven, how they're going to do the elders that are around the throne. And all they do, see all these, the, the, it, it says that all the elders do around the throne day and night. They don't take, they don't take a break. They don't get a coffee break. They don't go take a bath. Oh, y'all didn't hear me, did you? <laughs> they don't go brush their teeth. Come on, y'all didn't hear that, did you? Uh -huh, they don't even go to the bathroom. It's a day and night. Night and day, they're around the throne doing what? Doing what? Praising. They ain't got time for nothing else. They ain't got time for nothing else. And we sit back like, like sometimes like, oh, well, that's all cute. No, it ain't about being cute. Come on now. When you were down and out, when you were praying to God about something you needed and God asked, you need to be standing up and shouting. You need to be saying, thank you, Lord. Hey, man. When, when, when the debt collector came to try to take your car, y'all ain't never had that experience, have you? <laughs> or the bank come and try to take your home. Uh, I, I better not tell y'all this. Y'all may think I'm a deadbeat preacher. But I'll tell you anyway, I don't care. They done came and tried to close on me three times in my life. But I'm still there because the goodness of God was running after me. Before they caught me, the goodness. What must you say? Out of job for three times, sister? I was out of job for nine months. And the goodness of God was run, not just running out, it was running ahead of me because I needed ahead of me so I can see it. How? Oh, I didn't need it behind me at that time. I needed the goodness of God in front of me so I can see what goodness looked like because what was behind me was something that I didn't want to catch up with me. That ain't in my notes here. But I thought I'd share that with you anyway. Amen, 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 amen. So let's move on. I got 12 minutes, okay? And that clock keeps moving. Stop, stop. No, I'm just joking. So anyway, anyway, anyway. So why, why, why do you need to be a living sacrifice? You need to be a living sacrifice. It is to God. So you need to understand that when you sacrifice yourself, when you give yourself over to God, God wants to take you and do something different with you. He, he, he wants to live through you. He wants to be the, the embodiment of him through you. He wants to, to, to show people that he's real. Amen. I, I, I know the folk that I was in college that I used to fight with, and they thought I was a, a hellion, what they call, a rebel rouser. If they saw me today, they said, they ain't the same man. Hey, no, 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 that man's so nice today. <laughs> That's because, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, I'm going to tell you this here. When the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, when God saved me, I was in a mess. I was in a mess. I, 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 the devil had me so wrapped up in, 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 in racial uh, 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 conflict. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. And the Holy Ghost, when he saved me, he said, John, racism ain't nothing but sin. He said, racism ain't nothing but sin. It ain't nothing but sin. And he said, if you caught up in it, you are caught up in sin. And I done saved you. I done saved you. I said, so Lord, what about that? He said, because they don't see it don't mean it ain't true. The God's goodness is running. Oh, because oh, who was in the beginning? Adam and Eve. I'm going to leave it right there. We all come from Adam and Eve. Simple as that. 
Third thing he says, he says, he says holy unto God. Holy means sacred. You got to be sacred. You got to be pure. You got to be clean. And then he said, it's acceptable. When you give your life over to God, God is pleased that you gave your life to him. That's all he ever wanted in the first place was to commune with you, to be one with you, to love you, to give you the things that you need in your life. But if you don't submit to him, he can't give it to you. I got six kids and 14 grandchildren. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. My father died when I was nine years old. I never really had a father. But God has blessed me beyond measure. Six kids, six kids. Good Lord, have mercy. My oldest daughter, today is her birthday, too. She's 40. I ain't telling her. I ain't telling her. She's older than 47. Yeah, I was young, stupid, and dumb. Oh, that's the worst thing to have at the same time, boy. Young, stupid, and dumb. You got the three evils, young, stupid, and dumb. You can, you, you can mess up on all of those. Mess up when you're young. You mess up when you're stupid. But when you're dumb, young, and stupid, you really mess it up. And I had all of them at that time. But God's blessing, he has blessed me through my stupidity and my euthanism. So let's move on. I'm going to close two minutes. Oh, the clock went to 31 minutes. What's up with that clock? Man, that clock said 31 minutes. It was like 16 minutes ago. What happened? Did I pray and say, Lord, move the time back? Like was that Joshua said, Lord, hold the, hold, hold the time. Or, or, or get in. Hold the time, Lord. Good God Almighty. So the third thing we see here, you, are not, you, are, you aren't called to conform. That's Romans 12 and 2. Watch this here. He says... And be not conformed. I got all my markers and came out here. He said, be not conformed. Notice word, he didn't say, you need to be conformed. He said, don't be really conformed. The word conform means behavior in accordance with socially accepted norms or standards. Now, it's hard sometimes when you're around a group of people in a crowd or at work and everybody make most people are saying something that's a little different believing and talking about something that's a little different it's hard for you as a believer not to go along come on to sit there and be quiet not give your opinion not say what you think I, I know, I know, I, I work for a big old corporation, big time corporate. I mean big, one of the largest banks in the, in the country. And they got this thing called DEI. And they had their prize stuff, and I got an email talking about, don't you want, and I'm, delete. Delete. You don't send me that. I come to work, I, I do all the banking stuff I need to do. But you ain't going to get me to fall into a conform. You ain't going to have me conform against my, my fundamental belief that God, Jesus said, Jesus said he's made them what? Male and female. That's the book. I, I, I don't care how they try to rewrite anything else. I'm not conforming. You see, here's the problem with us. Pastor, now it's on 13 minutes. What's wrong with that clock? <laughs> I'm messing with that clock over there. But, 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 but let me share this. Let, 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 let me share this. Let me share this. <laughs> You see, it used to be certain things, what we call taboo. And they was over here in the corner. We all knew they were over there. But it wasn't in the mainstream. And so as long as it stayed in the corner, we were okay with it being in the corner because it wasn't in the mainstream. But somewhere along the line, the devil kind of snug in. You see, let me tell you how he snug in at first because, see, 40, 50 years ago, you used to be at the prayer school. You go to school, you had to pray. When they opened up school, they had to pray. 
She, we, but man, you go. I don't care if you Christian, Muslim. I don't get that you had to pray. Yeah. And then they come along and say, "Well, we need to get the prayer out of school." And the church folk didn't say nothing. You know what the devil had us say? Well, we can still pray at home. That wasn't the point. The devil wanted to take God out of society. He wanted to move. He wanted to move from the sideline into the main line. So now he, I'm, I'm getting to be conformed. I'm talking about conforming here, y'all. So he conformed. So, so the next thing he did, he said, well, we know we got homosexuality. No, it's a, it's, it's a taboo. But then a few years later, our legislator said, well, okay, men and women, men and men can marry women and slid it on in on the law. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I don't know him. I'm, let me let, let me tell you. I'm telling the truth. This this how to slick the devil. The devil's slick. We we are, we are not dealing with you. You may be thinking this stuff is not. This is a spiritual battle. Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm getting to being transformed. Trust me, because we have been transformed, but not in the right way. I'm going to help you to get transformed in the right way. So the devil sneaks in. When he sneaks in with marriage, now he got all kind of stuff. Oh yeah. What are you talking about, preacher? What did he do with Eve and Adam? Take a bite of the tree. And what happened after that? Cain killed Abel. Well, Abel killed Cain. Who could kill <laughs> Cain and Abel? <laughs> Cain killed Abel. He snuck, murder came in. The devil is slick. He's a real foe. He knows what he's doing. And I'm telling you, we don't need to conform to the world. We don't need to conform to what the world, and this is the pressure that we are under as Christians, that the world wants us to conform. So what does the word conform mean? And Paul was writing to the saints then in Rome, which was the seat of power, and they had all of this up. They had baths, how men was having sex with men all across the Roman Empire. And Paul was pleading with the saints. He said, don't be conformed. The word conform means, watch this here, behavior in accordance with socially accepted standards. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Some of your kids, I, I was talking to an alumni friend of mine the other day. He said, well, you know, we're dealing with this stuff in college, man. You got kids coming talking about my pronoun is this. I'm a cat. My pronoun is a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all don't think I'm real, though, y'all. Uh, let, let, let me say that again. My pro, call me a cat. I'm sitting at me out. That's what we've come. And it's going to be up to us as Christians to stand up and say, I ain't calling you no cat. I ain't calling no he, she. I'm saying male and female because that's the Bible. And that's what I'm standing on come hell or high water. You ain't going to make me call you nothing else. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say because my God is more than able to keep me from falling to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or even think. And so don't be conformed. Don't, don't be conformed. We, we're living under some pressure, and especially the younger generation. Ooh, I am so glad I'm not in my 20s and 30s today. Good God Almighty, I got some foundation under me. I got something out of some experience behind me. But these young folk, they don't have no experience behind them. All they got is all this stuff coming at them, and they don't know which way to turn. I'm here to tell you that the answer is in the book. It's been around for years. All right, I'm getting, I'm, I'm closing. He said, preacher, shut up. Get on out of here. Get up. So he didn't mean, conform, conform, conform. Patterns one mind and your character. That's, that's what it means. Don't pattern your mind and your character about the things that happen around you. Madden, pattern your character on this. Because it's true. Amen. 
It is true. Last but not least, he said, be not conformed. Then he said, be transformed. And the word transform means metamorphosis. You've seen that, I said earlier, I said the butterfly became the, the caterpillar. No, that's not true. I'm messing with y'all. The caterpillar became the butterfly. That's how you transform. God wants you to be something. See, I'm not, the, I, I'm not the same young man I was when I was 16, 17. And I've been transformed. I'm a, I'm a different person now. I, I, God took me and poured his spirit at me. And the transformation doesn't happen overnight. Let me tell you that. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a lifelong process where God begins to shape you and mold you and bring things out of you that you didn't know was even inside of you. If you would have told me 40 years ago that I was going to be a preacher, I would have said, you're out of your mind. You have lost everything that you know about anything because that's the last thing that John Walter Boswell is going to be, is a preacher. Because I don't even believe in that stuff. Show up, see that? It caught you, didn't it? That went over your head, didn't Let me say it again. 40 years ago, John Walter Boswell didn't believe in this stuff. But when God got a hold of me, when I told you he, ooh, I was going through some stuff, and life was, uh, I, I was, uh, if, if, if the, these folk talk about you in this thing called the Bible, they say that it's re, you real, you need to tell me. I need to know for my, I don't need it because somebody else said it to me. That didn't do it for me. I didn't need it because the preacher said I was going, that didn't do it for me. I needed a one-on-one -on -one experience with God for myself. And I tell you, when I told him, I need you to show me. Your, I remember this time, and I'm going I'm, I'm to close. I, I, oh, it's now to say no more minutes. Now no more minutes up there. Okay, I'm close. My daughter was eating. We are giving her to go to church. And she was eating some cereal in her high chair. She was about two years old. And all of a sudden, she started coughing, choking. And we were, for some, whatever reason, we were getting dressed in the kitchen area, in the living room, we were getting dressed to go to church. Church was just right down the street, a little small town. And my wife went over and grabbed her and started, excuse me, trying to get it out, and it wasn't working. And 911 was kind of new back then, 40 years ago, 911 was new. <laughs> it ain't like 911 today. <laughs> you go 911 in a town of 3,000, you're going to get somebody 20 miles away <laughs> in a town of 10,000. And so my daughter's choking and choking. So I told my wife, I said, well, let me do it. And, I, and, and, and you get on the phone and I'm hitting her. And by this time, it looked like her back is turning blue. And I didn't want to like I was crushing it. So I told, I told, I said, told my wife, my, it seemed like eternity. And I turned to my wife, I said, you take her. Let me talk to the people, the emergency people. Now, by this time, I'm scared. I'm, I, I'm frightened. My daughter's about to die. Can't get it out. And I said, Lord, I need you. And I need you right now. That was my I had a conversation. See, I knew he was real. I said, Lord, I need you, and I need you right now. And he said to me, John, I'm here. And as soon as he said to me, John, I'm here, I heard my daughter cough up the, the cereal. My wife has stuck her finger down her throat, what they tell you not to do. But the Holy Spirit showed up and said, do what Do what you suppose not to do because I'm almighty God. And I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do right now. Because you know why? He called me. That's transforming. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 5, lean not to your own understanding. I got three degrees, three majors in college. It ain't nothing. Your, our pastor, if you can ever get his doctor, it ain't nothing. 
You can take all the seminaries and all the books in, 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 in the world. It, it, ain't, it doesn't even come close to the surface, to scratch the surface of the knowledge of God. And he said, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, wherever you go, trust me, and I will direct your path. That's how you transform your mind, renew your mind. That's how you become something new, by trusting in God's Word. You don't become something new. You don't become a transformer by reading a book. You don't become a transformer by going to a new uh, a, a consortium of thought thinkers. You become a transformer in this world by the Word of God because God's Word is alive. And God's Word can transform your thoughts and how you think and how you live. And so when you get up in the day, when you start your day, the first thing you should say is, Lord, lead me today. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me the decisions I need to make. I don't know what's in front of me. And I don't know what's going to happen when I go out the door today. But you know, God, and I want you to lead me. Yes. Lead me, Lord. And he said, and the Bible said, and he will direct your path. I've given you my personal testimony twice where the Lord has shown. I mean, I can be up here all day and tell you how God done showed up in my life when I was at my worst. And try being unemployed for nine months and not having an income and thinking you can make it. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all your degrees and all your knowledge, you can't even get a job flipping burgers. But God can show up and show out. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We do thank you, dear God, for all that you are and all that you've been, Lord. And Lord, I pray that I've said something this morning to somebody, dear God, that's looking for not to be conformed. They feel the pressures of life. They feel like they don't have an escape. But Lord, I, I know you want them to be a transformer. And I want you to, them, I know that you want them to transform their world around them, whether their spouse, their friends, their family, their colleagues at work, if they're in school, their neighbors. Help them, Lord to be a transformer, not a conformer. More so in this world, we need, we need transformers than ever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.